Okay, so today I'm running the half marathon here in Great Bay, New Hampshire, slash Mar New Market, New Hampshire. <laughs> I'm here with Allison and Caitlin. Hi. And we're walking towards the registration right now. So, yeah, it's pretty warm today, which is nice. And I'm nervous because <laughs> there's lots of reasons why I'm nervous that they've been listening to about <laughs> for like two days You're now. You're gonna kill it. <laughs> Yeah, so about a month ago I had a knee injury that set back training. So basically I haven't really been training for a month. And then last week I had a really bad cold slash sinus infection. So I also didn't really train last week. And then here we are today. So I have my running compression band and my running belt. We're going to go to registration. about 15 minutes away before I have to leave. Keep this. And Allison's over here too. <laughs> You're not important. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> We're gonna have to edit that out. <laughs> Why? We're cute. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, we're 15 minutes away now. So the half marathon and the 5K are starting at the same time, which will be very interesting. I will admit, I'm getting really nervous now. <laughs> because it is the longest I will have ever run. The longest I've done so far has been nine miles. Um, so this is going to be four more miles than I've run before. I think it'll be okay. It, there's a lot of hills, a lot of elevation, but it's going to be all good. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> My band off already. I'm here with Yay. the two of them. So there were like four major steep hills. By way, steep, I really mean like you were running uphill <laughs> and they were not easy. <laughs> and the first two weren't as bad, but then one of them is like right at the finish line. You come to run down the hill, you oh, have to yeah. run directly uphill up and go come straight back down. That one was probably one of the worst ones, but the second to last one was really bad. Um, like everyone was, was not that great, but as you got further along, obviously it's getting worse. But going uphill isn't bad. It's like right when you get to the top of the hill, that's when you feel it. Um, it was really bad, but it was really pretty. My first few miles are in suburbia, New Hampshire. <laughs> so you just run around suburbia. And then you break off around two and a half miles for the people doing the 5K and the people doing the half marathon. And then you go on this really long trail all up through like the woods. So you're just basically running in the woods. <laughs> um, then you break out of the woods and then you're kind of in another like woodsy, like kind of like upscale suburbia woods neighborhood, which is really nice. And you come down and then you're by, I don't know if it's a harbor or bay. I don't know what it's considered. <laughs> um, and then you're back in suburbia right when you finish is basically the trail. But it was a really beautiful trail after that. It was very nice. So it was very hilly though. A lot of downhill and uphill, but mostly it's actually a mix of both. But um, yeah, I'm really tired now. But I'm, I feel accomplished. Well, so we're proud good. of her. Yeah. So proud. <laughs> so what did you guys do when I was away? We ate food, walked around, and got coffee. And then some cute little shops. Yeah. Or did they have anything good? Just I, mean, stuff. I mean, there's just little shops. Kind of like the ones we went in yesterday. This is my second one. <laughs> yeah, it is really cute here. It's very like small town New England. I feel like my yeah. arm's getting tired. <laughs> yeah, small town New England. Yeah. They also had a lot of water stations and they had Gatorade too at each water station, oh, cool. which I wasn't expecting. I don't drink Gatorade, but they had yeah. Gatorade. And at mile six, that's when I took my running gel. I took one of the Huma, I don't want to say it, the Huma lemonade running gel. It tasted really good, I have to admit. And they were giving out running gels too at mile six, which is about halfway. It's like a little bit before halfway. Um, so I thought that was really, really nice too. And then it was so cute in one of the places, so they had like, this is local races who sponsors this race. Um, so they were one of the ones doing the water stands, but at one of the houses, it was like these two little girls had a lemonade stand and they had like little lemonade they were giving out. It was so cute though. <laughs> I didn't take any because I don't really drink lemonade. At that point it was like too soon for me to drink anything. Um, but I thought they were so cute though, so. <laughs> and there's a baby crying over there. I made a face of the baby. <laughs>
day now actually. I did not film anymore after we left uh, Newmarket yesterday, but I thought I'd just give a few more final thoughts on the race and kind of what I thought about the Great Bay Half Marathon in general and also my first time running a half marathon. So I thought the Great Bay Half Marathon was run really well. Again, I was run by local races. So I used Runkeeper and according to Runkeeper, I ran 13.45 miles. And then obviously according to the race, I ran exactly 13.1. So I do want to point that out. I don't know exactly why mine was slightly different. So, yeah, so this is what Runkeeper said for me, for my stats and where I run and how fast I ran. Obviously the stats that I'm getting from local races is slightly different. Even as I was running, I could tell my app was off even before I got to the first mile because the app like hit the first mile and I saw the marker way ahead of me and I was just like, okay, like something's wrong. And then just as every mile I went, like the marker was further and further away for me to get to it. So that's something that I just thought that I just noticed personally. Again, I did think there was extremely well run. There was Gatorade and water stations like every mile to two miles. There's also people on bikes as well, like biking up and down the whole trail when you're running. So in case if you get injured or, or you fall or you see someone else who gets injured, um, you don't have to like run to another the next station to get someone from help. There will be like every few minutes, someone will bike past you. So I thought that was pretty good for safety. There is no cheering really at this race that much. Um, there's only cheering basically basically at the water stations, even though you pass a lot of houses along the way, only a few places had like people outside cheering people on. So if you really like people cheering you on in a race, this is not the race for you. <laughs> You're basically just running it kind of by yourself. Also, I don't know how many people were running the race necessarily. When I was looking at the bibs, the highest number I saw was a little bit over 500. I would assume about 500 people were running the half marathon. And I think 500 people were running the 5k. Uh, so in the beginning, there's a lot of people, but then by the time it got to the end, there was like, there'd be a lot of space in front of me. Then then, you know, the next group and there's a lot of space behind me and like for the next few people so the most part you kind of on your own for a few miles there is a part of the race where you go when you get to I think it's like mile 10 to 12 it's like you go down to mile like you go down a mile and a half you come back up the same way so on that there's a lot of people going both ways but other than that that was like probably the most crowded you would see a lot of people other than that you're kind of on your own in like the rural New Hampshire again like I said yesterday there was a lot of uphill <laughs> if you look at the elevation map of this race you can see like how high you actually go according to run keeper it was 759 feet was my elevation for me that was the most elevation I've ever done because again I don't hadn't really trained uphill that much so if you're planning on doing this I would definitely practice a few hills uh, just to like be prepared I think the most daunting hill was one where you're going downhill but then you immediately go back up so when you're at the top of that first hill you see the like the next uphill and it's just like oh damn like you, I'm about to like go straight down and come straight back up <laughs> but yeah there was definitely a lot of uphill there's also a lot of uphill too where you would go uphill and then be flat and then you go uphill and it was like it just kept going like you know steadily uphill uh, so there's a lot of that as well so keep that in mind in case like you're not like an uphill type of runner or you're not prepared for it because I definitely was not prepared I mentioned this in yesterday as well but I had a knee injury about a month ago so a month before the race I hurt my knee iliotable band syndrome or IT band syndrome or also known as runner's knee so it's basically the side of your knee it's like the tendon on the side of your knee it gets inflamed I definitely just google it because I'm not gonna be able to explain it better <laughs> than google can but that's what I had so I was kind of dealing with that for last month in training and then again I did have a really bad cold the week before the race so I really wasn't training that much my original goal was to be two hours or under and I ran this in about two hours ten minutes like technically it's two hours 11 minutes but if I count based upon again I ran 13 and a half miles so technically it's about a little under two hours 10 minutes is what I would assume for like the 13.1 which is still a great time I'm still super proud of my time especially because again like I did hurt my knee for running the whole I feel like first half of the race like one to six miles went by in such a blur like I didn't even remember running <laughs> like one to six miles really and I think that's partially because I, I I do like running obviously and I hadn't really run a long distance run in quite some time because I hurt my knee So when I was running it like just felt really great just to like be back out and running again Because like I missed it so much and then mile six I took my running gel It wasn't until I got to mile between miles nine and ten was the worst for me that like th that one mile was like a whole hour <laughs> Is how it felt like when I was running it was like between nine and ten just like could not it was just like I felt like I was like trapped between 9 and 10 for like, such a long time even though I know it was only about maybe 9 minutes like the same as all my other miles and then 10 onwards that's when I like felt the tiredness and the exhaustion I think that's partially mental because I had only run 9 miles previous to this so I think like in like mentally I was like okay this is now I'm exceeding what I've ever done before um, so I think that broke me down what also didn't help either is that when I was at mile seven, I miscounted for some reason. I said, oh, I only have five miles left, which is incorrect when you're at mile seven, you have six miles left. So when I got to mile eight, 
that when I, that I recounted, I was just like, oh, now I have five miles left. So I like had lost, I had like added on that that mile as well when I was running. So I think that also like mentally just like messed me up slightly. So when I got to like mile 10, I was just like, okay, like now I'm like kind of dragging a little bit. Now like I'm ready to sit down. <laughs> it was how I felt at mile 10. And again, the last three miles though, I also feel like went by pretty fast. So <laughs> like I don't really remember the last three miles either. I just do remember feeling tired. I didn't stop to walk at all. I personally don't really like stopping too much when I'm running also because of my knee. I knew once I stopped, it would be harder for me to start again. And that did happen because it was like right at a mile 11, there was like a water station. So I took water, but obviously if you run, it's kind of hard to drink water and also keep running at the same speed at the same time. So you have to slow down a little bit. So I slowed down for maybe two steps as I like chugged my water back. And when I started again, I took one step on my left knee and I could feel like the sharp pain. It was only one step I felt sharp pain. And then I took another step and like the pain wasn't there anymore. But at that point I knew it was just like, if I stop now, like I probably won't be able to start again. I really people who actually run that I should not do that like do not do what I did it's not safe for you do not like continue to get an injury I just like personally really wanted to finish and now I will not be running or doing any kind of exercise afterwards but I just wanted to say this just so like one I remember in the future and then also kind of like how I decided to just push through and even now I'm not like in excruciating pain the day when I woke up and like yesterday I feel pretty sore all over my body but nothing like I'm not in like pain though if that makes sense like I feel sore but it's not painful like, even my injured knee is not in pain it's just very sore and it's like a little stiff too. I probably could have stretched out a little bit more after the race than I did. And I did stretch out again before I went to bed, but I feel like no amount of, amount of stretching is enough stretching. You can always stretch more. I would say my knee is sore. My legs are like a little bit sore. My right ankle is more sore and my toes are very sore too. <laughs> um, I'm definitely gonna get another black nail. What's also sore that I wasn't expecting is my lower back is slightly sore and also like right in the front where my phone was and my running, like my running belt. So I think my running belt actually has what caused like my like lower back and like that little part in my front of me to be sore, which <laughs> just like the running belt like being strapped around for over two hours and like me, the constant like movement. And so I wasn't expecting that either. Like when I was rolling around last night in bed, I like I could like feel my lower back and I was like, oh wow, like that's, that's a little sore. <laughs> okay, I'm just realizing how long this video is. I just want to say overall, I do think that it was a good half marathon if you're interested in doing it. I'm going to leave the link for the half marathon down below. While New Market is a very small town, you're only about 20 minutes away from Portsmouth, New Hampshire. So I actually stayed in Portsmouth the night before the race and I hung out in Portsmouth on like Saturday and then Sunday morning I drove over to New Market to do the race. So if you're interested in doing it, you can always just go to Portsmouth first and then go over just to do the race on the Sunday. But yeah, so overall, I think it was a great race. I think it was well run. Um, I had a really great time doing it. And thank you again to Caitlin and Allison for coming with me and also for my parents too, who have been supporting me all through this way. So yeah, so thank you so much for watching. I'm super excited to run my next race and I will of course try to vlog the next one as well and give like a little in-depth review about it. But yeah, so thank you for watching and I will see you soon.